Hello and welcome. What's happening in the Indian IT services industry that fundamentally tells us about how it is better prepared for tomorrow, particularly when it comes to challenges like adopting artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, and so on. Well, who better to answer that than one of the doyens of this industry, Arvind Thakur, Vice Chairman and Managing Director of NIT Technology. Arvind, thank you very much for speaking with us. So before I come to the, the present, tell, tell me about what's been happening in the last year that gives us a sense or informs us about how better prepared we are as an industry for the challenges of today and tomorrow. So let's first understand what's been happening in terms of uh, you know the innovation and disruption that's been happening in the industry. So it's basically the confluence of three forces which is leading to adoption of uh, artificial intelligence, for example. <clears throat> One is the availability of uh, affordable cloud infrastructure. Mm. So that gives massive amount of computing power mm. that becomes available, uh, you know, and the second is the availability of large data sets. So this large computing power can be applied to these large data sets using algorithms which are getting more optimized mm. to create the ability in machines to really start thinking and learning like human beings. Mm. I think that's the fundamental thing which has happened over the last couple of years. And we're beginning to see that getting adopted quite rapidly. Mm. So if you really look at uh, you know, artificial intelligence, it's been around for 15, 20 years. Mm but it's only the last couple of years that we've really seen it becoming mainstream. And <clears throat> right here in the country, I think the industry has embraced it wholeheartedly. Mm. Uh, so I think all technology companies are looking at, uh, they were looking at automation earlier, now they're looking at intelligent automation, and they're building AI into their automation platforms. <clears throat> Domestically, if you look at uh, the way uh, technology is getting adopted, it's really getting driven a lot by the digital economy. And so uh, most of the uh, new companies, you know, which are uh, uh, providing services online, they use a huge amount of artificial intelligence to understand the consumers better mm. to be able to deliver a superior service. Right. So can you illustrate that with an uh, example from your own company that you know where you've seen this transition, where you've used AI to merge with an existing process or a client or a customer? So we've been doing it uh, a lot in the area of uh, IT operations. Mm. <clears throat> so typically, uh, traditionally, you know, when we did IT operations, you'd have a whole bunch of people who are uh, monitoring mm. the infrastructure. Mm. <clears throat> Uh, we kind of automated that using runbook scripts that improved efficiencies to a level of let's say 15 to 25 percent. <clears throat> now we are using robots and artificial intelligence because IT infrastructure generates a huge amount of data. Mm. And we apply these algorithms to predict failures, uh, to auto heal, uh, and do all these kind of things, which dramatically improves the efficiency of the in infrastructure. So that's one big area where mm. we are focused on as a company. Right, and and is it is the number of people who are monitoring also come down while as you are able to bring in more intelligence? Oh yeah, obviously, the yeah. number of people come down. Right, uh, as uh, automation comes in, mm. uh, the uh, the the productivity improves dramatically. Mm. So, IT operations is one area. Is there any any other area where you are seeing similar applications? <laughs> And then you see the whole area of robotic process automation. That mm. happens in the, on the business side. Mm. So uh, many, many applications, uh, uh, you know, which are traditionally done by human beings, uh, get automated using these software robots. Mm. Uh, so whether it is you know, updating mailing lists, or providing uh, customer service, uh, or uh, you know, just uh, updating records, they can all be done by uh, robots. Right, and traditionally this has been done by engineers sitting in India for clients outside. So you're saying now machines sitting in India are doing it or are machines taking over elsewhere? Well, uh, you deploy, mm. uh, it's basically software robots. Mm. So they can be deployed anywhere, yeah. on-site, offshore, anywhere. Mm. So they're doing both on-site as well as offshore. Yeah. So the question really is, uh, does a company like NIT and others in, in Indian IT retain the business or is it some of it going away? No, because we have transformed mm. and we've built in automation as part of a solution, mm. we actually uh, extend uh, the, uh, the life and the engagement with our clients by offering these uh, services in a more efficient and productive manner. Right, and if you were to look at the skills that we have today, and everyone's talking about are we uh, skilling, the reskilling, and the big reskilling challenge, where do we stand from your own company's perspective and where do we have to go still? So that's, I think, uh, a major challenge. Mm. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, the industry is going through a transformation, uh, they're transitioning, and a key element 
of that transition is to be able to reskill the workforce to be able to deal with these new technologies as well as these new paradigms. Every company has a huge program of reskilling and in fact the industry as a whole mm. is viewing this as a major initiative uh, to basically transform uh, and create those skill sets so that we can continue to deliver superior service. Mm -hmm. And it, can you, can you uh, again illustrate that a little bit, so if there was let's say an engineer with three or five years of experience who came in in the uh, uh, whatever in, in the last in the within the last decade, what would he or she be doing today to reskill himself <coughs> or herself? So to begin with, uh, you know, when we built systems in the past, they were monolithic systems, mm. <coughs> right? Large systems, <coughs> and so you needed a lot of specialization. So you needed people who understood the front end, people who understood the back end, people who understood middleware, people who understood testing, <coughs> and so you needed to build skills in each one of these areas, and that's how you know, they were performing these specialized mm. tasks. <clears throat> but in the new world, which is a digital world, where you're creating microservices, you're not building these huge monolithic systems. So the expectation is to have a full stack mm. engineer or a programmer mm. who has all these skills, mm. uh, as well as uh, certain soft skills associated being with uh, design. design and creativity. And so that's a very different uh, a kind of a product, you know, that you're creating to provide these services. And I, I mean, we've talked about this earlier as well in the last, over the last two years. So you feel that Indian engineers have managed to live up to this need or challenge? Indeed. In fact, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are some statistics which NASCOM has shared where they talked about uh, uh, half a million hmm. people who have been reskilled hmm. over the last one year. So there is this, that's a significant amount right. of reskilling. And uh, so, like I said, every company is engaged in this activity. And as an industry, we are also putting together a platform that can facilitate reskilling. Right. And are we past the H1B scare then? So really, uh, you know, when you're looking at uh, automation, uh, you can deliver these services from, from wherever. Mm. So basically what the H1B issue is doing is it's restricting mobility mm. of resources. So companies are changing the business model and uh, I think they're rapidly adapting you know, to the new environment. Uh, I think as, uh, I don't know who said, probably it was Charles Darwin who said, you know, it's not the fittest and the strongest to survive, but those who are able to adapt. Yeah. I think that's what the industry is doing. Okay. So last question, so if you were to look uh, ahead for the next uh, year or two, what would be the key trends that you're either watching carefully or looking out for, which can have a positive or maybe not so positive impact on the industry? And this could include, include external global factors. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, I think the key trend is uh, basically if you look at, uh, again, uh, just going back into, into history, you know, when we looked at technology, it was first being applied to the back end, mm. all right, large computer systems. Uh, then it came to the front end many computers. Uh, then with mobile devices, now technology is completely consumerized. So the key trend going forward is to deliver a superior experience. So it's no longer uh, you know, just efficiency and productivity. It is how do you deliver a superior experience. Mm. And I think that is where uh, the industry and companies need to start focusing on. Okay, and are you seeing any external challenges, big external challenges, potential? Well, we just discussed one, uh, mm. which was around mm. uh, uh, mobility. Mm. Uh, I think there are some other challenges also which are emerging. Uh, we're beginning to see uh, certain uh, uh, regulatory issues emerging, for example, in Europe with the new uh, GDPR, you know, mm. which is the data protection mm. laws which are coming into place, which are going to put uh, some pretty stringent compliance requirements on companies and service providers. So I would say most of the challenges are external. Mm. In the coming uh, in the coming year right and finally is there one thing that you're excited about i know you're excited about many things but what would be the <laughs> one thing that you would be really excited about i think we're really excited about is the way uh, technology is uh, completely disrupting uh, so what happens is when you have disruption you have discontinuity and discontinuity creates opportunities so you know one has to seek those opportunities and adapt your business models and I think that's the excitement that we are seeing in the industry. That's a good note to end on. Arvind Thakur, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you, Gaurav.